this is a scrounger and you'll hear the side of argument, but perhaps it would offend you to hear such wickedness from the mouth of a sponger. Do you fail the spice picked entirely by scrounges? He caged all his meals at the houses of friends, or should I say, acquaintances, for quite soon he had no friends left. He borrowed money for absolutely positively unquestionably the shortest of times and the best of reasons, but somehow the loans were never repaid. <laughs> they call me to fail the sponge because I soak up their food and money, but truly there is such meanness in the world that anyone bringing out this sponge at the end of the day will often find it dry. My noble and esteemed coffee will give dinner the other night for a few friends and serve a table of fish dishes worthy of the greatest cook among the marbles. Therefore, do much for few to eat without discomfort and indigestion. So I thought it was my duty to go help up eat up the meal. You seem to have lost your appetite, said Aveline, thinking he had insulted me so successfully that I would not visit him again in a hurry. I have to admit, a certain loathing of fish, oh mighty Califi, ever since my father drowned in the sea, I have never been able to stomach a sea fish. These savage beasts on the table probably ate him after all. All the all bad were now quite spellbound and their jaws dropped. How should we know unless you tell us? I am far too young to have eaten your father, but if you want revenge, look at the, uh, those big fat mullets lolling on that plate over there, that plate beside the noble Califi's hand. For they are the very fellows that gobbled up your father. He fell off his chair. <laughs> and when, when he had picked himself up, he set the biggest red mullet in front of me. It was so big that it hung off either side of the plate and said, Eat it, enjoy it, and I hope it gives you indigestion for a week. Your tongue is as slippery as any fish on the table. So we shook hands and ate until three in the morning. In the morning. Such pretty gluttons deserve each other's company, said Shrek. I enjoyed your story, but I hate people who keep their brains inside their stomachs like the octopus. As the poet says, I do not live to eat as does the glutton who stuffs himself with bread, meat, and pie. 
For when the glutton finds his way to heaven, the gates are all too small to take his size. <laughs> Greedy people never reach a happy ending. Take the example of the fox in the story of the crow and the fox. He ate so much that he emptied a whole valley of anything that ran, crawled, flew, or jumped. If the new day spare me to see moonlight again, she replied, I will speak it in Arabic for your delight and convenience.